today's class, we have seen various parameters that we have evaluated for balance section. And uh, in my introductory lectures, I have said that we never designed the beam as balance section. We designed the beam as under reinforced section. Uh, however, the parameters for balance section come handy to determine whether we are designing the beam as under reinforced or over reinforced. So, balance section parameters are used as a litmus paper. So, we know whether we are going on under reinforced side or on over reinforced side. Are you with me, Shreya? Yes, sir. Okay. So, now uh, having known these parameters and their values, now let us consider an example of design of RCC beam, reinforced cement concrete beam. Uh, design RCC beam having length of 5 meter simply supported at both ends. Consider UDL due to dead load of slab as 40 kN per meter. So, all of us know that the load path is from slab to beams, from beams to columns. So, whatever is the load there on slab is going to be transferred to the beam. So, it has been given to you that uh, the dead load of slab ke se, jo dead load, jo UDL, uniformly distributed load beam ke length ke upar aara hai, that is 40 kN per meter and UDL due to live load on the slab. So, this slab will be occupied by occupants, furniture which is movable. So, all that is characterized under either a imposed load or live load. So, live load is given as uske baje se aane wala UDL on the beam is given as 25 kN per meter and both the UDLs are given to be unfactored. Are you with me, Shriya? Yes, sir. Okay. So, now uh, let us first draw the diagram of this beam. How does this beam look like? So, this is a beam of length 6 meter and it is supported at both ends by simple supports. So, simple supports look something like this. One end is hinged, another end is roller. It is going to look something like this. Are you with me, Shreya? Yes, sir. So, I have shown this is. And uh, it is subjected to UDLs due to dead load of slab and live load of the slab. So, let me draw those UDLs first. So, if I draw the first UDL, and the second UDL, so how much is the first UDL that is due to the self weight of the slab and that is 40 kilo newton per meter. So, this UDL is 40 kilo newton per meter. Are you with me? Yes, sir. And how much is the next UDL? Both that is 25 kilo newton per meter. 25 kilo newton per meter. So, what is the total UDL acting on a beam at a given time? Uh, due to dead load, it is 40. Due to live load, it is 25. So, it is 40 plus 25 kilo newton per meter. That is 65 kilo newton per meter. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, so, now uh, in such kind of problems, the first step that we do is, so I will write step 1. Uh, the step 1 is load calculation. So, we already have load given. Load due to dead load is 40 kN per meter and load due to live load is 25 kN per meter. That is already given. So, we don't need not calculate it, but we need to do the calculation for load combination. So, what is the load combination? Load combination that we are going to consider is load combination. It is dead load plus live load. Are you with me? Yes, sir. 
uh, and what is the partial safety factor for this combination? Partial safety factor for load in this combination. So we are already aware that the partial safety factor for this combination is 1.5. So, therefore, the load to be considered or ultimate load to be considered. Ultimate load to be considered is 1.5 times. Dead load plus live load. Happy. Yes, sir. So, this is the step number 1. Uh, so, at the end of the step number 1, I know. Uh, how the loading diagram looks like. So, loading diagram is going to look like this. Just give me a second. Okay, so the total load is going to be 1.5 times dead load plus live load. So let me write down that load. It is 1.5 times dead load plus live load. That is 40 plus 25. So can somebody do the calculation and tell me how much is this? 1.5 times 65. Sir, 97.5. 97.5. Ah, so, this is 97.5 kilonewton per meter. Are you with me? And this is acting on the entire length of the beam, which is 5 meter. Happy? Yes, sir. Ah, so, on the 5 meter length uh, of beam, we have this much load acting, which is 97.5 kilonewton per meter. Uh, and now, step 2 is step two is drawing its SFD and BMD. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So we need to draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for this beam. So I need to find out this reactions at the ends. So how much will be this reaction? It is going to be half the load. And this reaction is also going to be half the load. Why? Because there is a symmetry in support conditions and loading. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Uh, so this this load is 97.5 kilonewton per meter. The length is 5 meter. So total load is 97.5 into 5. And half the load is 97.5 into 5 by 2. So this reaction is going to be 97.5 multiplied by 5 by sorry, by 2. Similarly, this reaction is going to be the same. So, can you tell me how much is this? 243.75 is isn't it? And what is the unit? It is in kilonewton. So, this reaction is also same. 
that is 243.75 kilo newton happy so yes. now we are going to go ahead with the second step that is SFD and BMD. To draw SFD and BMD, we need to calculate the reactions. So now let me draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. So you have already studied how to draw the shear force diagram. Uh, so rise by the reaction. So there is 243.75 reaction here. So rise by that reaction. So here the ordinate will be 243.75. 0.75. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Ah. And then uh, just give me a second. Two forty three point seven five, and then uh, at the end we have to rise by the reaction. So that is also two forty three point seven five, but on negative side, two forty three point seven five, and as there is a UDL on the beam, therefore the shear force diagram has to be linear. So the shear force diagram varies something like this. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So this is SFD. I have not drawn it to this scale, but you have to understand that this shear force diagram is symmetric and zero shear force occurs at the mid length because this ordinate is same as this one. Happy? Yes, sir. And how does the bending moment diagram look like? So let me also draw BMD. So BMD looks something like this. Where bending moment at the ends is zero and the maximum bending moment occurs at the central point, mid length point, and that bending moment is WL square by 8. This bending moment is W into L square by 8. So this is equal to what is the value of W two forty three point seven five? Are you with me? Yes, sir. Two forty three point seventy five into L square. What is the length five? So it is five square, and this divided by eight. This is the value of bending moment at this location. So, can you tell me what is the bending? What is the maximum bending moment? So, seven sixty one point seven one. Seven sixty one point seven one. Sixty one point seven one. And what will be the unit of bending moment? Kilo newton meter. Happy? Yes, sir. Ah, so now what are? Uh, so this is the step two. In this step two, we have calculated SF, we have drawn SFD and BMD. Now, what is the step three? From SFD and BMD, we, we locate the locations where there is maximum shear force and maximum bending moment. And we compute something called as design forces. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So design actions. So what are the design actions? We must design this beam to carry the maximum bending moment of 761.71 kN meter. And we must design this beam to carry the shear force of 243.7. Are you with me? Yes, sir. 
So let me write down that. So what do we call the maximum bending moment as? We call it as MU, the moment maximum moment that needs to be resisted. How much is that? That is 761.71 kilonewton meter. Happy? Yes, sir. You, and what is the maximum shear force? So how do we denote the shear force? Shear force is denoted by the notation VU. So ultimate shear force that needs to be resisted is 243.75 kilo newton meter. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So we need to now design a beam which carries maximum bending moment of 761.71 kilonewton meter and I'm going to call it as MUD because this is the design moment for which I need to design the B. D stands for design. Happy? Yes. However, I am not going to call this as VUD because this is not the shear force for which we design the beam sections. When we come to the shear force design, I will tell you how to derive the design shear force from this shear force. Okay? Yes. So right now we are going to do first something called as flexure design. So step four, what is the step four? So in step four, we go ahead with flexure design. So what is flexure? Flexure is nothing but bending. So in step four, we are going to now design the beam to carry this bending moment, MUD equal to 761.71 kilonewton meter. Happy? Yes, sir. Ah, now, uh, imagine that if I were to design this beam as a balance section, so in that case, what is the depth that I should provide? If that is the question that I'm going to ask, so what I'm going to do is MUD will now be equated to moment of resistance of balance section. So do we have the formula for moment of resistance of balance section? Yes. What is that formula? RUB, that is moment of resistance factor for a balance section. Sorry, not RUB, it is RP. Ah, U is ultimate, so it is that correct. RUB multiplied by just a second are you b multiplied by b b square are you with me shreya shreya yes ah, so are you b multiplied by BD square. What is RUB? It is moment of resistance factor. On what does this moment of resistance factor for balance section depends? It depends on two things. One is what is grade of steel and another is what is grade of concrete. So as it is a design problem, we may not be given what grade of concrete and what grade of steel you have to use. So we have to make a choice. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So typically for beams, we use grade of concrete greater than 20 or equal to 20. So let us go ahead with M20 concrete. So I'm going to use concrete with characteristic compressive strength of 20 MPa. And I'm going to use the steel of Fe500. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So this is the choice that I make. So what is the choice of material I'm going to use? M20 concrete and Fe500. So this is not given. This is our choice. Happy? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, now, uh, for M20 grade concrete and for Fe500 grade steel, can you tell me what is the value of RUB? We have a table with us, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, it is 2.66. Uh, so RUB for this combination is 2.66. Happy? Yes. Sir. Ah, so I will plug this value here. MUD is 761.71. So let me substitute that. And by the way, what is the unit of RUB? Can you tell me what is the unit? It is Newton 
per mm square right yes sir this is how we have derived it so therefore i must substitute all forces in newton and i must substitute all lengths in mm so when i substitute uh, this 761.71 kilo newton meter this this value is in kilo newton meter isn't it are you with me shreya yes sir Ah, so I need to multiply this value by what? So that I get the value in Newton mm because I have to use forces in Newton and lengths in meter. So kilo Newton to Newton. What is the conversion? 10 power 3, isn't it? Yes, sir. So now I have this MUD in Newton meter, but I want it in Newton mm. So meter to mm, what is the conversion? Again, 10 power 3. Happy? Yes, sir. Ah, so 10 power 3 into 10 power 3, how much is it? 10 power 6. So this becomes equal to 761.771 into 10 power 6. 10 power 3 into 10 power 3 is not 10 power 9. By law of indices, 761.71 1 into 10 power 3 into 10 power 3 is 761.71 into 10 power 6. Now, this value is in Newton mm. Happy? Yes, sir. This needs to be equated to RUB into BD square. So, what is RUB? 2.66. Happy? Yes, sir. And now, I have to make a choice of B. So I will assume, assume. Typically, what is the width of beam that we encountered? It is somewhere close to 230 mm. Uh, that is like a 9 inch thick wall. So beam width typically is 230 mm. Uh, we can go ahead with, let us say, 300 mm. So I'm. this is my choice. So assume B equal to 300 mm. Instead of saying assume, it is better to say that we choose width to be equal to 300 mm. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Uh, so if I choose the width as 300 mm, this multiplied by d square, small d square, this has to be satisfied so can you now tell me what is the d required so kya karna hai hame 761.7 into 10 power 6 divided by 2.66 divided by 300 whatever is the answer you get take square root of that and tell me what is the requirement on d yes sir tell me Shreya, are you calculating? Yes, sir. Yes, how much? Sir, uh, I am getting it as 30.89. No, some problem. Please take care of 761.71 into 10 power 6. Mm. Okay, let me cross verify.
No, no, I think you made a mistake there. 976 is the answer that I get. Can you cross verify? Yes, sir. Is it correct? Uh, just a second, sir. 10 power 6, have you done that? Sir, I got it as 976. It is 976.99. Right. So, this is the width, this is the depth required if I want to design this section as a balanced section. Are you with me? Yeah. Balanced section. But are we going to design the section as balanced section? The answer is no. We want the section to be designed as under reinforced section. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Ah. So, what do we do? So, if you provide any depth greater than the depth required for balanced section, the section becomes under reinforced. So, what is the rule? Provide depth more than more than that of balance section. It becomes it becomes under reinforced section. And under reinforced short form, I'm going to write that is as you are. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Okay. So I need to provide a depth uh, greater than 976.99. Uh, so so how much will I provide? I will go ahead with uh, at uh, means be uh, liberal in rounding of this depth because at 976, the section becomes balanced. We want it to be under reinforced. So at least provide. Let us say 100 mm more than that. So I will go ahead with D equal to, let us say, uh, 976 plus 100, 1076. So let us say I will provide D equal to 1100 mm. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Great. So uh, we are going to provide D equal to 1100 mm. Provide. So, I'm going to call this as pro one. Happy? Yes, sir. Great. Uh, now, I have issue this whiteboard is over. I want to how to add page to this. Uh, just give me a second. I will stop. Pause the recording for it. So now we have decided how much uh, depth that we are going to provide. The depth that we are going to provide is uh, how much? 1100 mm. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, so now step number five. Once I decide that I am going to provide the depth of 1100 mm, the next question that I am going to ask is how much area of steel is required on tension side? So, calculation of AST is the next step. So, what is AST, area of steel to be provided on tension side? Happy? Yes, sir. Are you with me? Now, uh, see, uh, we know that for balance section, what should be the percentage of steel and all everything is known. But as this is an under reinforced section, we cannot use the same formula that we used for balance section or for the same table that we have derived for balance section. That acts as a reference, that acts as a table to decide whether the uh, designed section is under reinforced or over reinforced. That formula cannot be used, that table cannot be used. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Why? Because our section is under reinforced section. So, what is the formula for AST that we have to use? So, I am not going to derive this formula. However, uh, I will share with you a link where I have derived this formula. Uh, the lecture is available. 10 or 12 minutes clip is available on YouTube. Are you with me? We are directly going to write down the formula. Happy? Yes, sir. So, AST is equal to AST for under reinforced. This is for under reinforced section under reinforced section 
for balance section, we have already derived a table where we have grade of concrete, grade of steel, and percentage of balance steel. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Uh, so here we are going to use this formula. AST is equal to 0.5 FCK. Let me write 0.5 FCK divided by 0.5 FCK divided by FY. FY. 0.5 FCK upon FY into bracket. So into bracket, then one minus a square root of square root of one minus four point four point six four point six MU upon FCK BD square F C K B D square into bracket outside this B into D. Are you with me? Shreya? Uh, Shreya, are you there? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, this is the formula that we are going to use to compute the area of required steel on uh, tension side. So, what is the value of FCK in our case? So, we assume the grade of steel, grade of concrete to be 20 M, M20. So, FCK is 20. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Uh, so, you, you have to understand one thing. In this entire formula, we have to substitute forces in Newton and lens in mm. Happy? Yes, sir. So, this is the unit that we are going to follow. Forces in Newton and units in mm. And then we get AST in mm square. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Uh, so, 0.5 into FCK that is 20, which is in Newton per mm square. NPMA has, so it is in Newton per mm square. Divided by FY. FY, we are going to use it as 500. Happy? Yes, sir. Uh, then into bracket square root of uh, 1 minus square root of square root of 1 minus 4.6. What is the value of MU? So we have already computed the value of MU as. 761.71 uh, into 10 power 6. Happy? Yes, sir. So, 761, 761 point, how much? 761.71. 71. 71 into 10 power 6. Mind you, this value is to be substituted in Newton mm. Because we have we are substituting force in Newton and length in mm. Happy? Yes, sir. Uh, this divided by FCK again in Newton per mm square. So it is 20 MPA. Let me write down that. B to be substituted in mm 300. Happy? Yes, sir. And D to be substituted again in mm. D is how much? We have provided D equal to 1100. So, 1100 square. Happy? Yes, sir. Uh, and outside this, we have to multiply it by B 
that is 300 and into D that is 1100. Happy? Yes, sir. So let us evaluate this, calculate this. We will get AST. So I'm doing it with you. 0.5 into 20 divided by 500 multiplied by 1 minus square root of in bracket 1 minus 4.6 into 761.71 into 10 power 6. This divided by 20, this divided by 300, this divided by 1100 square bracket complete outside the bracket this entire thing needs to be multiplied by 300 into 1100 0.520 upon 1 square root of 1 minus okay Just a second. How much did you get? I got it Sorry. as. Ah, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sir, I got the root as an imaginary number. No, no, it is not. Have you done 1100 square? Sir, I got it as 1852.70. Yes, that is correct. I also got the same 1852 into 7. So, the one who has got imaginary number, please uh, do it correctly. Compute this term, compute this term first. That will be less than 1. So, 1 minus that will be a positive number. Uh, so, it turns out to be 1852 mm square. You can cross verify. So, I got an independent confirmation. So, it's all right. So, we need to provide AST is equal to uh, uh, this many mm square. And now, uh, this is the AST requirement as far as uh, resisting a moment of 761.71 kilonewton meter is concerned. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Uh, but as per IS 456, IS 456, uh, 2000, जैसे हम steel में IS 800 use करते थे, वैसे यहाँ पे हम क्या use करते हैं? यहाँ पे use करते हैं IS 456. Uh, we have a requirement of minimum steel in the beam. So, we have a requirement of AST still provided on tension side. How much should it be at least minimum? So, I'm going to look at that requirement from IS clause and then we will discuss why this minimum still is required. But first of all, let us look at how much AST minimum is required as per the IS standard. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So now, uh, let me uh, pause the recording for a bit. We will search that clause in IS code and I will resume the recording. Okay. So this is the clause of IS 456 uh, requirements of reinforcement for structural members. For beam, the minimum reinforcement, minimum area of tension reinforcement shall not be less than that, that of given by AS upon BD where AS is the minimum area of tension re reinforcement. B is the breadth of beam or breadth of the wave of T beam. So, in our case, it is 300 mm. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Uh, D is effective depth. In our case, it is 1100 mm. Uh, so, the reinforcement cannot be less than 0.85 times Fy. AS by, AS by BD cannot be less than 0.85 times Fy. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So, let me go back to uh, the whiteboard. Uh, how do I stop sharing? Share content. 
white board. Are you able to see the whiteboard? Yes, sir. So AST minimum. What is AST minimum? It is 0.85. Just give me a second. 0.85 upon FY multiplied by BD. So B into D. This is as per which class? So let me write down the class number. It is as per 26.5.1.1. 26.5.1.1. This is the class number of IS456. Are you with me? Yes, sir. 456. So I cannot have reinforcement area less than this. So let us compute this area. How much is it? So it is 0 0.85 divided by FY, which is 500. We are using 500 grade steel multiplied by what is the width? 300. And what is the depth? 1100. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So, how much is this? Tell me. So, 561. Ah, 561 mm square. So, I require tension side steel at least equal to 561 mm square. Happy? Yes. Ah, so, it, uh, is the requirement of steel from flexure criteria greater than this? We require 1852.70. So, is it greater than this? Shreya? Yes, sir. Ah, so, therefore, therefore, what do we provide? Therefore, therefore, provide, provide AST equal to greater of the two. In dono may say greater. So, how much is this? 1 at 5 to 0.7 mm square. Happy? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, now, Jesse, I'm going to check ki hai, ki reinforcement minimum reinforcement. Se kam to nahi hai. Paise bhi check karna chahiye ki kya ye reinforcement maximum reinforcement se jada to nahi hai. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So, we have to now check whether IS code gives us uh, the maximum reinforcement that is allowed in B. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So, so, let me check the class and give it to you directly. Ha, maximum, so it is class number 26.5.1.2. I will just read it out. It is not re required that I show that to you. You can cross verify. It is on page number 47. We will give the class number 26.5.1.2, compression reinforcement. And, uh, okay. Uh, I have to look for tension reinforcement. Yes. Hmm. Maximum area of tension reinforcement shall not exceed 0 0.04 times B into capital D. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So, now we will provide karenge and we will find out what is AST max, area of steel on tension side max as per ice code. So, that turns out to be 0 0.04 times B into now capital D. Capital D is the overall depth and not the effective depth. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Ah, chalo. Uh, so, keep this is, I will also tell you the class number. Uh, class number is the same class, but it's B section. So, this, this same class. Class number 26.5.1.1b. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Uh, now, uh, 
have we computed the overall depth of the beam? No, we have just computed the uh, small t, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, so, the first thing that we need to do in order to check this clause is to compute capital D. Happy? Yes, sir. Uh, now, so if I were to provide 1852.7 mm square, uh, I have to choose now the number of bars, number of layers, and bar diameter, isn't it? Yes, sir. So, let me draw a sketch here. So, this is a cross section of a beam. One minute. This is the cross section of the beam, and in this cross section, we are going to provide the bars like this one, two, three, four on tension side. Happy? Yes, sir. The question is whether one layer is sufficient. I should go for two layers. What what it what should it be? So for that, what I'm going to do is uh I'm going to give you a table as a reference, which gives you the bar diameter, bar diameter and area of one bar, area of one bar in mm square. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So, if you consider 8 mm uh, diameter bar, it's the area of one bar is around 50 mm square. If you consider a 10 mm bar, of course, bar diameter is in mm. Bar diameter in mm. The area is around 78 mm square. If you consider a bar diameter of 12, uh, the area is 114 mm square. You can calculate these areas pi by 4 into 8 square, pi by 4 into 10 square, pi by 4 into 12 square. These areas will be these. Are you with me? Yes, sir. For 16, it is around 200 mm square. 201 to be precise. Let me check. Shift pi by 4 into 16 square. 201. I'm right. So, not 200. 201. Then for 20, can you calculate pi by 4 into 20 square? Tell me how much is that? Is it 314? Cross verify. Shreya? Yes, it is 314. Uh, then calculate it for 25. Is it 490? Yes, sir. So, 490 mm square. Then calculate it for 28. How much it is? Uh, 615.75. Ah, so, it is 616. Around. Uh, then calculate it for 32. Uh, 804.24. So, 804. And calculate it for 36. Uh, 1017 point eight. 1017. So 1018. 1018. 1018. Yes, sir. Not 1118. One minute. 1018. Right? Yes, sir. So, I think you should be remembering this table. Hmm. Now, how much area of steel you need to provide? 1852, right? Now, look at the bar diameter. Look at the bar areas of one bar here. If I provide 8 mm bars, so, one bar ka da area is 50. So, 1800, I will provide a lot of bars for 1800, isn't it? Yes, sir. And it may go into four or five layers. So naturally, I am not going to select bar diameter as eight. Happy? Yes, sir. So if I choose the bar diameter as 20, so how many bars do I need to provide? 
वन एट फाइव टू डिवाइडेड बाय थ्री वन फोर सो आई नीड टू प्रोवाइड अराउंड सिक्स बार्स सो कैन आई प्रोवाइड सिक्स बार्स इन वन लेयर नो आई विल हैव टू गो फॉर टू लेयर्स आर यू विद मी यस सर Uh, why can why i cannot provide these bars in one layer i will let you know in a while but now let us not go for uh, 20 mm bar diameter let us go for 25 so for 25 1852 divided by 490 so how many bars i need to provide four bars so let us not also go for 25 let us go for 28 so 1852 divided by 616 so how many bars i need to provide approximately 3 bars 3 bars are falling just short of are you with me yes sir uh, so what what will i do i may go ahead with 2 bars of 28 mm diameter and 1 bar of 20 mm that should be sufficient so let me check 2 into pi by 4 into sorry 2 into 616 plus 314 it turns out to be 14 1546 so it is less so uh, 2 bars of 28 and 1 bar of 25 are you with me yes sir so 616 into 2 kitna hua 1 2 3 2 are ye kya ho raha hai sorry i will provide two bars of 32 mm and one bar of 25 so 804 into 2 plus 490 so ye zyada ho raha hai so better to go for three bars of 28 616 into 3 1848 that falls short of little short of this so ab kya kare so we will go for four bars of 28 four bars of 25 4 into 490 are you with me ha ah, that is sufficient yes so we are going to go ahead with four bars of so dekho four bars so how do we write four numbers so the sign is hash four bars of 25 mm diameter are you with me yes sir so this is what we provide so what is the value of ast provided this is ast provided so it is going to be equal to 25 फाइव एम एम के एक बार का नंबर एरिया कितना है फोर नाइनटी दिस मल्टीप्लाइड बाय फोर सो टेल मी हाउ मच इज दिस एंड दिस इज इन एम एम स्क्वायर इज इट इट सर इज इट ग्रेटर देन वॉट एवर इज रिक्वायर्ड One eight five two point seven is required, so it is greater than. It is greater than one eight five two mm square. So therefore, okay. Are you with me? Yes, sir. At the same time, we have to check that with this depth, eleven hundred mm. what is the area of steel for balance section so let me write down that ast for balance section so how much is ast for balance section so you have made a table dekho yaad karo pt for balance section ka ek table aapne banaya tha percentage of steel for balance section that depends on grade of steel and concrete so we are using m20 and fe Four one FE five hundred. So for this combination, can you tell me what is the what is the percentage of steel for balance section? Look at that table and tell. Shreya. Ah, uh, yes, sir. You have that table, right? Yes, sir. So tell me. Sir, it is point seven five. So point seventy five 
परसेंट सो पॉइंट सेवेंटी फाइव डिवाइडेड बाय हंड्रेड मल्टीप्लाइड बाय बी इनटू डी दैट विल बी द एरिया ऑफ स्टील दिस इज परसेंटेज हैप्पी यस सर दिस मल्टीप्लाइड बाय बी इज थ्री हंड्रेड एंड डी इज इलेवन हंड्रेड सो टेल मी हाउ मच इज दिस This point seventy five value from is Sir, PT uh, balance PTB percentage of steel for balance section is this value? Yeah, tell me. So it is two four seven five. Seven five mm. अब जरा याद आने दो मैं क्या कह रहा हूँ. If the depth of depth required for balance section से हम ज्यादा depth provide कर देते हैं तो section होता है under reinforce लेकिन steel के लिए बराबर उल्टा है if the provided steel is less than the steel for balance section then it is under reinforced are you with me yes sir ah so वो sentence में लिखता हूँ यहाँ पे if ast provided is less than AST P, then it is then it is under reinforced section. Otherwise, it is over reinforced section. So, what do we want? We want the section to be under reinforced section. So, is our AST provided less than AST B? Yes. Do you agree? Yes, sir. So we are providing how much? We are providing nineteen sixty mm square. This is definitely less than two four seven five mm square. Therefore, hence. Section is under reinforced, and hence it is okay. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Uh, so, अगर ये steel हमारा balance section से ज़्यादा आता, तो हम क्या करते? We would have revised the depth. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Depth increase किया होता, तो formula में डालने के बाद ये steel कम आता, and then we have to satisfy this requirement. Happy? Yes, sir. Okay. Up. Let us try to uh, provide this steel. So, can I provide four bars in a single layer? So, if I have to provide four bars in single layer, then what will be the clear gap, or, or what will be uh, the center to center distance between the bars? ये हमें लिखना पड़ेगा. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So, let me draw this distance. So, if I am pro providing four bars in A single layer. How much is this distance? So let me call this distance as delta. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Uh, so how how will I how will I compute delta? So to compute delta, I must know what is the clear cover. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So clear cover is which distance? Side cover. This distance. I must know how much is this distance. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Ah, so let me say that distance is thirty-five mm. Are you with me? Yes, sir. We will have this always as minimum as thirty-five. So clear distance. I'm sorry. So this distance, this one. So this is thirty-five and thirty-five from both sides. Happy? Yes, sir. Ah, so thirty-five, thirty-five. So what is the remaining distance? What is the width? Width is three hundred mm. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Ah, so three hundred. Ah, yeah, minus thirty-five from this side and thirty-five from this side. So two times thirty-five. Happy? 
यस सर माइनस मुझे कितने बार से उतने बार डायमीटर माइनस करने पड़ेंगे हैप्पी यस सर सो बार डायमीटर कितना है ट्वेंटी फाइव सो माइनस फोर टाइम्स ट्वेंटी फाइव हैप्पी यस सर एंड ये स्पेसेस कितने हैं वन टू थ्री इजेंट इट यस सर सो वॉट इज द क्लियर डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दी बार्स आई हैव नॉट करेक्टली शोन डेल्टा आई हैव टू शो डेल्टा एज क्लियर डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दी बार्स दैट मीन्स दिस डिस्टेंस दिस इज डेल्टा Are you with me? Yes, sir. So this will be delta will be equal to this divided by three. देखो three क्यों? Because when I subtract the clear cover, when I subtract the bar diameters, the gaps that remain are one, two, and three. Are you able to see that? Yes, sir. Let me show it by laser print. Laser one minute. Mm -hmm. So you have this gap one, then you have this gap second, and you have this gap third. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So one. Two and three, so I have divided it by three. So can you tell me how much is this number? Three hundred minus seventy minus twenty-five into four hundred. Sir, it is forty-three point three three. Forty-three point three three. So let me write down that. So this is forty-three point three three. Three three mm. so the clear gap between the bars if i provide four bars in single layer is 43.33 mm now i scott tells you that this gap has to be minimum something so what is that clause so that we will see in the next class are you with me yes sir uh, so the, if there is that minimum gap that is required is not satisfied this gap is less than that minimum gap then we are forced to provide uh these bars in two layers are you with me yes sir okay so with this we will stop for today uh we will start uh we will do the next part in the next class have a good day thank you sir